Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. In this episode of the scripting series we'll learn how to create three different types of interactable objects, of course using interfaces. If you don't know what interfaces are and how they work you may want to watch the previous episode first. Now let's get started. First of all let's create the interface for our interactables and call it iInteractable. It will contain two methods. First one, interact, that will be called whenever we press E button and there is an interactable item in range of our character. And then the second one, can interact, that returns boolean, indicating if the interaction with the item can be performed. I placed already on the level all of the interactables and assigned simple collider 2D to them. Let's implement opening the door. I click on the door and open the animation window. I create new animation and call it door open. I press the red record button and then add property rotation. On the last keyframe I rotate the door 90 degrees. I click on the animation and disable looping. Then I open the animator and inside of it I create an empty state. I set it as default. This way the door will start not animating. I make it transition to door open state. I add new trigger parameter and set it as a condition for the transition. I create the door script and assign it to the door object. I make the class implement iInteractable interface and automatically generate both of the methods. In most IDEs you can do it pressing Alt Enter and selecting the first option. Then I do a little bit of cleanup. I create two private variables, first one to store the animator and then second one to store the information if the door is open or not. In the start method I grab the door's animator and store it in our variable. I want the door to be interactable only when it's closed, so I return negated is open variable. As for the interact method, I simply change is open to true and set the open trigger on the animator. Our character is not able yet to interact with the objects. So let's implement this part now so it will be much easier to test everything out. Under my player character I create an empty object. I call it interaction detector. I add circle collider 2D to it and increase its radius. To be detected the interactable will have to be inside that circle. And of course I check the is trigger checkbox. I create a script interaction detector and add it to my object. Then I open it up and remove the start method because we won't need it. Then I create a list of iInteractables and call it interactables in range. Then I create two methods, on trigger enter to D and on trigger exit to D. In our on trigger enter to D method we try to get the interactable from the collider, that is from the object that entered the trigger. If the object is not interactable the method get component will return null. If an interactable has been returned and we can interact with it, we simply add it to our list. In on trigger exit to D, once again we try to get the interactable from the collider and then we simply check if our list contains it. If so, we remove it. Small side note, probably it would be good idea to check if our interactable is not null before we check if the list contains it. In the update method we check if player press the interact button and if our list is not empty. If so, we grab the first interactable from it, then we call its interact method and then we verify if it still can be interacted with, if not we remove it from the list. If in your games you will have a lot of interactables next to each other it might be worth to move the item you interacted with to be the last one in the list. This way the player will be interacting with all the objects around him not only with the first one. You can set up the interaction button in the input manager. You simply clone an existing axis and rename it to interact. Then you change the assigned button. And done. Time to test the door. Fantastic. Ok, let's implement the computer. Basically each time we press the interaction button we'll spawn a random floating message. I create an empty object and call it message. Then inside of it I create another empty object and call it text. I assign to it text mesh pro text component. I input the placeholder text, change its size, make it bold and then make it vertically and horizontally centered. Then I make sure it's on the top of everything by changing its sorting layer and its order in layer. I create a message script and attach it to the outer object. 
In a moment we'll implement simple floating animation, but before we do that I want to make sure whenever it finishes our message gets destroyed. In the start method I will call destroy method with two parameters. First one is the object to destroy, in our case the game object containing the script, and second one time after which the object will be destroyed. In our case we can simply get the length of the animation from the animator. Now make sure the outer object is selected, and if it is, open the animation window. Create an animation and call it message. Then select the inner object and make sure the red record button is pressed. This animation will be pretty simple. On the last frame we move the object up and change its alpha to zero. This will make it completely transparent. I make sure the animation is not looping and then test out if the destroy logic works as expected. Awesome. I drag and drop the message object into the project window to convert it to prefab. Now I create the computer script and of course assign it to the right object. I open the script and implement the iInterruptible interface. Once again I use shortcut to generate the missing methods and then after that I make a little bit of cleanup. Then I create two serialized variables. First one to store the messages and then second one containing the prefab of our message object. In the first line of our interact method I generate random index and then use it to get the random message. I instantiate the prefab at the position of the computer and with the zero rotation. I use get component in children to get the text component. I have to do that because our prefab consisted of two objects. The text is not located on the parent but on the child object. If the text would be located on the parent object I would use the regular get component method. Now I simply set the component's text to our random message. For the can interact method we simply check if the array is not null and if it contains any messages. On the computer game object I set the messages and then set also the prefab. I also remove the prefab existing already in our stun. Let's test it out. Woohoo! Fantastic! And do you know what else would be fantastic? If you'd like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's implement the shelves. First I create a script and call it container. Then I assign it to both of my objects. I open up the script and do a little bit of cleanup. I create serialized list of strings. It will contain all the items that's inside our container. The reason I'm using list instead of array is because I want it to dynamically change size whenever we add or remove item. Then I create second serialized field, this time to hold the message prefab. Then I implement our iInterruptible interface and generate the methods. For the caninteract method I simply check if the list exists and if there are any items in it. For the interact method I simply grab the first item and remove it from the list. Then I instantiate the message prefab at the position of the container with zero rotation. Then I set its text to display the item name. Then using the magical find object of type method I find the player instance. I move for a second to the player script. I'm adding a list of strings that will represent the character's inventory. Then I create a public method add item to inventory that accepts a string and simply adds it to the list. Then just for us so we know the method has been called I add simple debug log. I go back to the container script to our interact method. And here I simply call our new method on the player object. The only thing left is to populate the variables on our shelves. First the message prefab and then the items. Let's test them out. Woohoo! Fantastic! I think it was amazing opportunity to test a little bit our knowledge about interfaces. If there is still something that is not clear, please let me know down in the comments. And in meanwhile, have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.